show with Star Television Network on Channel 21, and this is the national news with me, Sienna Wright. First, our top stories. As the government of Sierra Leone, with support from national and international stakeholders, has commenced a three-day national peace and cohesion conference at the Bintumani International Conference Hall, Aberdeen in Freetown. The government is eager for the final communique from this event, and we expedite its consideration by cabinet and then the Sierra Leone Parliament. The Freetown City Council has on Monday 20th May 2019 commenced a 20-day fraud mitigation exercise. Yesterday we were at Potty, we could have access, today we are at Lomi, um, but behind me is the Semba Gunter, and this is also going to be a part of the flood mitigation work. For the first time, 10 juveniles from the Remand Center have been granted presidential pardon according to the prison watch. We want to say thank you to the government of Sierra Leone, most especially the president and his team, for hearing the voice of prison watch at this time around because uh, in our privileged discussion with the director of public participation, he was able to bring up the names of these boys and they were granted amnesty. And in sports, the Sierra Leone Single Leg Amputee Association has begun its annual Inter-Regional Amputee Championship edition in the Eastern Region. Our, our passion for this game is for us to be able to gather some of our players who have gone missing for a long time, you know, so we can bring them together and face the African Nations Cup, which is coming up in the Angola in September. Those were the headlines. It's now time for the news in detail with me, Sienna Wright. As the government of Sierra Leone, with support from national and international stakeholders, has commenced a three-day national peace and cohesion conference at the Bintumani International Conference Hall, Aberdeen, in Freetown. President Julius Madabio promised to build a peace commission that will take on board all facets of society. Leonora Jarara has more. Sierra Leone's National Peace and Cohesion Conference, dubbed by President Biyo as Bintumani 3, has kicked off on the 23rd of May 2019 with speeches by representatives of various facets of society. But it is the President's keynote statement marking the opening of the conference that drew much interest in terms of setting the agenda and the tone of proceedings for the next three days. The President spoke of a Sierra Leone that is desperately in need of consolidating democratic practices and enhancing national cohesion whilst pushing hard for support for the establishment of a National Peace and Cohesion Commission. This is what he said. So my government is eager for the final communique from this event and we expedite its consideration by cabinet and then the Sierra Leone Parliament. Sierra Leone deserves a permanent and effective peace infrastructure on which the full spectrum of Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone voices is represented. This is why we are here today. Let us hold ourselves accountable as a nation how we protect and provide access to, to services for the vulnerable. Let us protect women from sexual violence, gender violence, and gender discriminatory practices and attitudes. Let us protect persons with disability, children, youth, and the age. Making his statement, the Chief Minister, Professor David Francis, who is also chairman of the event, said President Bio organized the Bintumani 3 so as to consolidate democracy for peace and national cohesion. He noted that it is a must for every Sierra Leonean, including political parties and groups, to support peace and national cohesion in the country.
The main opposition to All People's Congress Party kept to their words of boycotting the Bintumani 3 conference. But a strong member of the party, Honorable Alpha Khan, joined other stakeholders in the conference. In an exclusive interview, he told Star Television his reasons for attending the conference despite his party's boycotts. I have always wanted a peace conference. I have always been advocating for dialogue. What we need is integration. What we need is bridge building. What we need is cohesion. And so I have always stood by that. And that is a policy that I cannot change. It's my DNA. I like cooperation. I like integration. I like dialogue. That is why I am here. I have decided to come. Long before the party decided they were not going to come. I went to the party office on, I forgot the day now, to tell them that uh, I believe we should go because this is about the nation, it is not about politics, it is not for, about our own petty interests. Is he betraying his party? This was his response. I did not come here to betray a party. I didn't come here as a party member. I came here as Alpha Khan, ambassador at large. I was invited as a person, and I'm invited to be a chair lead, a moderator, in one of tomorrow's sessions. So I have to accept, because it is a duty to serve a I did not come to represent the APC. The APC didn't come, so I didn't come as APC. I came as Alpha Kano of Potloko, and I came to represent my people and myself. I Honorable Alpha Khan refuted rumors that he was chased out of his party office during their stakeholders' meeting prior to the Bintumani 3 conference. That is a rumor. There is nobody with the kind of temerity, with the kind of audacity, with the courage to even look at me in the face and say, Alpha Khan, you can't come into the APC. I didn't join the APC yesterday. I was an activist of the APC from age 10 in 1962. And I've been like that 57 years. I've been longer in the APC than some of them have lived in the world. So nobody can tell me that you can leave the APC. Where will I go now at this 11th hour? Nobody. Nobody chased me. I left because I knew that when they came down, they are going to read a statement that they had decided upstairs, for which I was not party. And I went there to tell them, let us look at this thing from the national point of view. Let's take it away from the myopic view of our political party. Let's look at the issue that is on the ground here. If you go to this, we might have a platform to discuss other things that are disturbing you. So let us go. So I walked away peacefully. The National Grand Coalition Party, NGC, who earlier said they would not attend, also revisited their position and decided to attend the conference. The parliamentary leader of the party, the Honorable Kande Kole Yumkela, tells Star Television why they came about that decision. My party had a conference call where they presented our position paper. They also stated that they got invitation cards, but they are not sure whether they were invited as participants. But I think that has been misconstrued, that they, did it, they said the party would not participate. The fact is, I'm here with my chairman and leader. We had a good meeting last night, looking at the whole conference with the team that we had set up to do, deal with the position paper. We debated it, we discussed it, we had some youth representatives. The youth did not want us to participate. That is fact because they have issues that they see in the country they are not pleased about. Some of what happened in Tonko Limba and other places, unemployment and so on. We had a good discussion. We believe that as part of constructive engagement, we should be here. We should not only be here, we should present a formal paper. Leonora Jawara, Star Television, Freetown. The Freetown City Council has on Monday, 28th May 2019, commenced a 20 day flood mitigation exercise. The exercise is aimed at mitigating flood disaster often experienced in the city. Moses Oju Kamara has more. The mayor of the Freetown municipality, Yvonne Akisoya, has said that the council, together with the Republic of Sierra Leone Armed Forces, Arislav, and other stakeholders, will be engaged in clearing the drainages and gutters, which is aimed at minimizing the flood risk within the municipality. She went on to state that, despite the cleaning exercise taking place every first Saturday in the month, some areas of the city were completely unmitigated prior to the intervention of the council. Yesterday we were at Potty, we took an access.
today we're in Lomli, um, but behind me is the Semba Gote, and this is also going to be a part of the flood mitigation work, where we are consistently going through clearing gutters, culverts, waterways to minimize the risk of flooding. And I want to basically say a big thank you to the RSLAF, the Army who are working with us, um, SRA who are supporting, and to RMFA and to the Irish government who provided funding for the exercises here. We did it last year, it was really effective, and we're really glad to have the support of central government and development partners as we do it again this year. How are you feeling the impact so far? We've only done one site. The Information, Communication and Education Officer of Freetown City Council, Koma Hassan Kamara, noted that the exercise is expected to last for the period of 20 days and will be targeting flood risk areas across the city. It was successful last year and out of the projects last year we have less land. I mean things that there are challenges to us that we think we can learn from and those we have put in place already and as you can see we even have additional fund, funds from support from donors and we also got additional awards. Awards that, are not, that did not benefit last year have come on board, they are, they are now benefiting from this project. So I believe it can also be successful. And another thing is we have more personnel on board this year compared to last year. We have the team is well set, well planned, because like I said, last year it was like a pilot phase. But because it was successful, it was, I mean, it yields its results, so we believe this year it can be more excellent. She further went on to state that the 20 day mitigation plan is aimed at identifying and addressing key drainage challenges in order to protect lives and property within the municipality. Kuma Kamara intimated further that the council bylaws are still in place and thus will be robust in enforcing them as they are engaged in the door to door sensitization. The councillor of Ward 413, Hannah Mary Jaya, commended the council and promised to effectively cooperate with the council to make sure that a cleaner zone competition becomes a routine exercise. It was disturbing. I am so happy, so pleased today to see the action going on. To see cleaning taking place here. As well, health is well, so we are really prepared to Me and my wife and two members will stand on the ground to see that whosoever that is not will face the full penalty of the Because the council states in its by law that whosoever that is not is liable to pay for the fine of 500,000 euros. And we are prepared to see that it takes place. For Star News here in Freetown, I am Moses Ojukamara reporting. For the first time, 10 juveniles from the remand center has been granted presidential pardon according to the prison watch. Sadomba Maturi reports. 10 children in conflict with the law have been granted presidential pardon. The 10 juveniles were granted presidential pardon following numerous appeals made to the government by Prison Watch Sierra Leone, one of the vibrant civil society organizations in the country. Speaking at a press conference organized at the headquarters of Prison Watch Sierra Leone in Freetown, John Lance and Akoka appreciate the humanitarian gesture extended to the 10 children that we are in conflict with the law and on behalf of his organization express gratitude to President Julius Mada Biu, Office of the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, the Office of Director of Public Prosecution for positively responding to their humanitarian appeal. We want to say thank you to the government of Sierra Leone, most especially the president and his team, for hearing the voice of prison at this time around. Because uh, in our previous discussion with the director of public participation, he was able to bring up the names of these boys and they were granted amnesty. For the, for the office of the DPP, we want to say thank you and the office of the Attorney General and Minister of Justice because they had been the pillar behind this and they have succeeded to grant our boys presidential pardon which have never happened in this country. Well for the past government we have been calling on them, we have been crying over this issue but nothing, no action has been taken. But for this year with, with the intervention of the uh, DPP, the, the new DPP, he has been able to forward the case of these guys and they have been granted pardon. I mean, Salih Jalo, in his remarks, noted that the Pademba Road Correctional Center was constructed for 324 inmates, but over the years, the number drastically increased to over 2,000 inmates. 
disclosing that there are currently 123 children at detention center. Among them are four girls, according to the report. This is, is a very great step undertaken by the government of Sierra Leone, especially the president, and that we're able to achieve this through the uh, honest work of the current director of public prosecution, who listened to our call and listened to our suggestion and took it to the uh, Amnesty Committee and ensure that 10 children were released. For us, we think this is something we will say thank you to him and will continue to encourage him to continue to work in for humanity. Portia is uh, one organization that works with persons in conflict in law, which includes uh, those in policers, those in correctional centers, juvenile homes, and in some, to some extent, uh, local court detention facilities across the country. We basically monitor, we investigate, we document, and report incidents of human rights violation to uh, authorities according to the government of Sierra Leone that uh, we are happy that uh, for the first time children have been released through the humble efforts of uh, the Director of Public Prosecution, uh, Barrister uh, uh, Ismon Gakwi. Uh, we want to say uh, thank you to the government also for honoring that one. I want to continue to say that uh, there are a lot of people who continue to be held behind bars, especially those for minor offences. We think that uh, much more steps must be taken to expedite their matters. When Adam Road alone was constructed for 324 inmates, as I speak to it's over 2,000 inmates at Adam Road. You look at those juvenile homes, as at yesterday, there are 123 children in the juvenile homes, out of which four of them were adults. So, uh, I can't give you specifically, but you go right around the country in every detention facility, there is overcrowding. Bo was constructed for 80, it has over 250 inmates as I speak to you. Same as Kenema, constructed for 75, it has about 250. So the numbers keep growing, they are not coming down at all. So we want to encourage, we want to appeal to government to look into those matters of persons who continue to be held behind bars for a long time so that their, their matters can be expedited and justice can be pushed out to them. What? The Bull Correctional Center was constructed for 40 inmates but now have about 250 inmates. Kenema Correctional Center was constructed for 75 inmates, but the number have increased to 200 inmates. Mr. Jalo called on the government for speedy trials, as justice delay is justice denied. For Star News, Sadomba Maturi reporting. And now to round up the new sports. The Sierra Leone Single Leg Amputee Association has begun its annual Inter-Regional Amputee Championship edition in the Eastern Region. Well, let's join our sports correspondent Hilton John for what's happening in the sporting world. Thanks to ECNI in the studio for some sporting news. We start to look and see. The Sierra Leone Single Leg Amputee has begun the fourth edition of the National Championship with six teams from the region competing in the competition in the eastern part of the country. According to the president of the association, who is Jabati Mambobu, he said the essence of the competition is to see how the association will select the better players that will be representing the country in international competition, more especially the MPT Nation Cup, hopefully in July. The competition is still in progress in Kenema. Here is the report. Um, I'm Jabati Mambu, I'm the president for the Single Leg Amputee Sport Association. We organized the fourth edition of the Amputee Championship 2019, of course, here in Kenema. And uh, our passion for this game is for us to be able to gather some of our players who have gone missing for a long time, you know, so we can bring them together and face the African Nations Cup, which is coming up in the Angola in September. So one of the agents for this league is for us to be able to, you know, capture some of the good players, we put them together, then we're able to face international competition. 
the sponsors we got was from um, government of Sierra Leone. Of course, we wrote a lot of documents to parastators and other people, but we didn't get much support. We got support only from the government of Sierra Leone through the Ministry of Sport. We thank the finance minister, the financial secretary, we thank the minister of sport and the deputy, the director of sport for making it possible for us you know, to host this tournament. We have been yearning for it for a long time. And we thank God today, it's here and it's here for real. So this is this, how many editions? This is the fourth edition of the Amputee Football Championship. You know, we have used to host in different, different regions. Now we have five teams partaking on this one. And we, we have team from, two teams from Freetown. We have one team from Kenema. We have one team from Makeni. We have one team from Kailahu. Don't you need play foul. Pass the ball. Copy the day. Go. 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 Remember some of these guys that got their trouble or issue during the bloody rebel war in 1999. We hope that the government of Sierra Leone will also give support to the Western Area Football Association, the Eastern Region, Northern Region, and also the Southern Region, as they want to play the kickstand or they want to begin the First Division League and Second Division League. Despite we saw the government of Sierra Leone supported the Premier League board with 3.5 billion yen, the female football. 145 million units. So what's about the region? They are still looking for help. Government of Sierra Leone, we are calling on your attention to give support to the region for the kickstart of the Division League. Finally, in the international scene, it's really sad news for Bulgarian Lefki, who died while officiating. The 32-year-old was officiating in the football match when he passed away after a collapse in the pitch. Here's the report. Victor Hurtado. Ingresa rápidamente la asistencia del equipo de Always Ready. Fue el gesto del jugador de Always Ready que ingresó en este segundo tiempo. Bejarano fue claro de preocupación, llamando una pronta asistencia eh, para el árbitro del partido. Se desplomó, así nomás, Víctor Hugo Hurtado. Imagino que alguna situación extra, totalmente extra, a lo que uno puede imaginar de un rendimiento de futbolistas, de autoridades del partido, los jueces, árbitros, en fin, de lo que va en este compromiso casi eh, 49 minutos, 50 minutos de partido, algo le ha tenido que afectar al señor Hurtado, por eso el desmayo, está siendo atendido por los médicos eh, del plantel de Always Red, inclusive de Oriente Petrolero, va un tanque de oxígeno, eh, Ramiro. Sí, los de Oriente trajeron un tanque de oxígeno, para ver si es esa la situación de falta de oxígeno del árbitro del cotejo. Ahí están ingresando también los de la Cruz Roja de este sector, están ingresando de la portería donde estaba el guardameta de Oriente. Y Aldo, yo recuerdo pocas veces ver una imagen de esta, de un árbitro que se desploma, que se desmaya en el transcurso de un partido. Algo ha tenido que afectar, insisto, pro, eh, no creo que sea producto del sol porque tampoco está haciendo una temperatura elevadísima aquí en el Estadio Municipal de Villingenio. Inclusive eh, cruza un viento eh, frío aquí eh, en el Estadio de Villingenio, pero hay una gran preocupación porque sea prontamente atendido el señor Víctor Hurtado. Qué pena por lo que estamos observando. No tendrían que retirar la camina, está ingresando en este momento, esa es la instrucción. Ay, por Dios, eh, de verdad que, 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 que es un susto el que tenemos en este momento, como lo decía Freddy, nunca antes, por lo menos, desploma y en este momento está siendo trasladado en ambulancia a la clínica más cercana de Viringenio. Esperemos que todo salga bien, Freddy, ¿no? Hacemos votos de que así sea. Eh, Ramiro, ¿qué novedades hay en el campo de juego? En este momento hay reunión de los eh, tres árbitros que quedaron. Hablamos del señor Wilson Arellano, Alain Ledesma. Six months ago, this same incident occurred in Sierra Leone after we saw referee Victor Mara passed away. This time is what we are referee. May soon rest in perfect peace. Patricia in the studio.
thank you very much Hilton for that sporting update. Well, that's what we have for you here in our local news bulletin file for the R on Star Television Network Channel 21. I am Sienna Wright. Thanks for watching and do stay with us.